church. It is so good to see everybody here. Uh, we're just glad you joined us this morning. Uh, you could be anywhere in the world you want to be today, but you chose to come to a house of the Lord, doesn't matter which one. As long as, you're, as long as you want to worship, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, I'd like I say hi to our visitors. Is this your first time here? Nice to see you. We hope you come back. If you've been here a hundred times, nice to see you. Hope you come back. <laughs> and uh, we're going to start things off with a song here. You can sing along if you want to or go ahead and get yourself situated in your seat or whatever you need to do to uh, get in the mindset to uh, worship our living Savior, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. to see everybody here today. Really, really it is. Um, children's church? Yeah. All right. Any any of the kiddos that are going to children? What's the age? What's the grade? One through five? Or? Yeah. First, to first, first through grade fifth. through fifth grade. So I'm in sixth right. grade. I don't have to go. You're in sixth grade. You have to say. I got homework. Any kids when I, going for children's church? Head on over. Miss Sherry's in the back. Yes, it's always a great time at Children's Church. They, they have a great time. There's snacks, there's activities, there's a, and there's a lot of love over there in that room, guys. There's a lot of love. So, any children? Look at all the kids going over there, guys. It's everybody. It's Everybody's just amazing. That many, that many blessings are walking through that door now. That's the future of the church, guys. That's who's going to take over when we're promoted. Uh, it's amazing. Thank the Lord for that. All right. If you would, please, uh, let's have the opening prayer. Please bow your heads with me for the opening prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you today, Lord, with uh, an amazing wonderment in our heart, Lord, that, uh, that you would want to have a relationship with us. You don't need us. But, oh, how we need you, Lord, and that in your infinite wisdom and in your grace and your forgiveness, you, 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 you love each one of us. Even though we fall short every day, you still, you love us. You sent your son to pay the price that we could never pay. It, it was a debt that we could never be good enough for. We could never do enough good works because we're flesh. And you, you know that, and you sent the perfect lamb sacrifice to stand in our place, Lord, to receive the judgment that we should justly give. But instead, you, you made a way back to us, back to you for us, Lord. And for that, we are eternally grateful for your grace and your love. We ask that you be with those that can't be here today, Lord. Maybe they're traveling, maybe they're sick, having to work, whatever the case may be, Lord. Just be with them and, and, and let them know in your special ways that there's nowhere from the depths of the bottomless, deepest part of the oceans to the farthest reaches of this universe, Lord, there is nowhere that your presence is not there. And we ask that we take the music today, Lord, let it be for your glory. We ask we take the message today, Lord, out into the world that 
make us courageous, make us brave, make us spiritual warriors in your name, Lord. And let us spread the good news to anyone who doesn't know. And hopefully, Lord, let them have a receiving heart so that they would not be lost, but they would come to you as well, Lord, for your endless, boundless love that you freely give us, Lord, in the forgiveness. We ask these things in our living Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to do a few more songs here. We really encourage y'all to sing along, sing along, uh, make a joyful noise for the Lord. That's what it's all about. I mean, he gave us the gift of music, the gift of song, and uh, what better way to use that gift than to honor him for his glory. Y'all sing along with us. One. Two, one, two, three, four. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the Y'all sound good this morning. It is such a blessing to get to be here and, and to sing praises to our Savior. I mean, a lot of places in the world right now, guys, folks are getting in prison. They're getting killed just for being in possession of a Bible in some countries. Think about that. Think about the blessings we have at this co- in this, world, this country that we can freely worship whoever we want to. I hope we never lose that.
worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you I tell you what, we got as good a group of worship singers of the Lord as anywhere you're going to find. And, and you know, I say this often, and the great thing about it is they, they don't come up here to perform for you. They come up here to sing praises to God, and we just get to experience how good they are. Um, it has uh, done one thing that's been really good for y'all. I don't much want to sing anymore. I've kind of, I've kind of lost, uh, lost my want to since they've started. But I got a few uh, announcements before we get started. Uh, see what all I've got here. On the bulletin board, if y'all may notice, Brandon's fixing up some really nice things to show what's upcoming for the kids, for the youth in the next month. So. Uh, take a look at that on your way out, and I'm sure that if you wanted a copy of it, there's some somewhere, maybe out on the, in the foyer. Uh, went to the doctor this week, had all my blood work done and all this. They said, you're great. I got to, uh, oh, thank y'all. Uh, I wish I could stop right there. Uh, I love this, my doctor. You know you're getting old when you knew your doctor when they were this tall. But anyway, she, uh, she said, uh, all your tests came back great. She said, have you forgot where the gym is? <laughs> and I said, well, I've, I told her I'd just been under a lot of stress. That sounded better than me saying I'd been sitting in my chair lazy. But uh, so I guess uh, 
the old Jim's going to get to start seeing me again. Any visitors we have here today, we don't make you stand up or anything fun. No, you don't have to stand up. You're not a visitor. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if there's any visitors on the back table on the right-hand side of the door, if you're, if you after church, if you would, fill out one and maybe put it in the box over there or just leave it on the table. We'd love to have a record of you being here. And I'll even send you an email with a daily Bible verse if you want to. You can, you can block them. You can read them, whatever you want to do. But uh, anyway, I wish you'd do that. I've got some uh, fellow classmates and kin folks here today, so I'm going to be a little nervous uh, and I won't point them out, but if, if any, if any, if there's a couple of ladies that come up to you that are very pretty and they start trying to tell stories on me from 1970 through 73, they're nuts. So don't worry about it. Don't listen to them. Now, I'm glad to have Charlotte here. She's my first love. Uh, she's my cousin. She's my sister, uh, closer than my family and, and, uh. She brought her family with her and Rhoda, she's here with her husband that he fixed my daughter's car so many times I think he was leaving slots open for us when she was in high school. He, would, he, he was a uh, body shop man and she uh, seemed to want to bulldoze everything that got close. So anyway, uh, youth camp coming up June 4th through the 8th. 6th through 12th grade, Brandon will have all the information on that. Uh, we're having a, a, the training class for the defibrillator that we've got February 11th. That's on a Saturday at 9 a.m. Everybody's invited to attend. And I'd appreciate if all of you uh, would come up and learn how to use this thing in case my gym doesn't work. But uh, on uh, the 19th, they're, we're going to have a spaghetti lunch fundraiser for the youth camp. Uh, our youth will be serving. And so uh, we'll have that right after church. Uh, I want to encourage you to come to Sunday school. I know we're having more and more people come up. 930, we got a class for everybody. we got a nursery uh, all the way up to, to the older folks here. So uh, love to have you all come up. Uh, the ones that We've got a big prayer list on the back, but there's some on the front. Billy Burnett uh, will start his treatments, I believe, Tuesday. He's at MD Anderson, and uh, he got the weekend off, but they'll be going back and starting his treatments on Monday or Tuesday. Remember him. Uh, Uncle Paul, Paul McKenzie's doing much better. Uh, saw him setting up and... and uh, Oh, really? May come home tomorrow. That's awesome news. He was in pretty bad shape last week. Uh, he's going to be having some more tests, I believe, on February 7th. So we'll be praying for good news on that. Uh, Gene Riley, earlier in the week, they thought had a stroke, but they have about decided that maybe it was a, uh, just a, an, an infection that uh, he needed. He's home. He's getting better. Uh, some of you may have saw the Facebook post I made yesterday that... Uh, Dr. Uh, John Wharf, who's my eye doctor, uh, went and saw him Monday before last, and Tuesday or Wednesday he had a stroke, and he's in Baylor Hospital. Uh, 57 years old, works out all the time. He was going on vacation and to run up a mountain, see how fast he could get up. That's the kind of stuff he does. So, see, he's in good shape, so I don't know about that, Jim. Uh, Ken Hensley, Henley. I had it spelt wrong, but I got it spelt right now. Ken Henley uh, is doing a lot better, so we're glad to, glad to hear that. Uh, Grace Bailey uh, is Marsha's uh, granddaughter. She had some tests run this week waiting on results, and y'all continue to pray for Grand Lures. She's home, and, and I think she's ornery, so that's a, good, that's a good sign when Grand gets ornery. I got one thing that Kathy wanted me to read out for you. Um, it's uh, the ladies for the ladies group. It says our women's group, uh, Ladies of Grace, has a delicious new project, a church cookbook full of great recipes and dishes. Martha's not going to be putting anything in, y'all, I can assure you. <laughs> I thought she was in another building, I'm sorry. 
But they've got, they've got some submission forms. Where are they at? You what? Okay, they're going to hand you something as you leave. Uh, going to be passing out forms today and hope you'll share some of your family's favorite meal recipes. We're making it uh, easy as pie, she says, for you. Uh, you can hand write your recipe on the forms or send scans or photos uh, to Rhonda Stevens. Her email is on the handout. A basket marked recipes will be in the back uh, for dropping off handwritten ones. Uh, we need them by February 26. Proceeds will benefit the Ladies of Grace and their various Christian projects. All this information is in the information pack you'll get. Our book will be dedicated to our dear friend and church member, Paula Perkins. We knew the true value of good food and fellowship. The cookbook was her suggestion as our next fundraiser. Paula's spirit will always be with us. Pretty sure I'm not going to get any lunch today. Is anybody going to have a spare place? <laughs> Oh, me. It's all right. I get in more trouble. Anyway, thank you all for bearing with me through the, the announcements this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for seeing us through another week and for the privilege to gather here in your house. We're blessed that you provided salvation in your son Jesus. We're blessed that you love us, watch over us, and lead us in the direction you'd have us to go. Father, we pray for the lost, that they will open their eyes and come to the realization that salvation is found only through your Son. Father God, I pray for the sick, the suffering, and those who are saddened. May you heal them, lift the burden, and bring the light of joy to all the others. Father, I pray for the message today. and. Ask you to give me the words that would have your children to hear, and may they make a difference in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Heard a story this week. This church was gathered up. They were standing around, they were talking, they were getting ready for church service, and Satan walks in. And when he walked through the door, it was mayhem. People running out the doors and all the exits and everything they could, and they were running over each other, but they finally cleared out except for this one man. This old man sat there, and Satan walked up to him and said, Do you know who I am? He said, Yep. Satan said, Aren't you afraid of me? He said, Nope, sure ain't. Did you realize that with a word I could kill you? And he says, I have no doubt that you could. Don't doubt it for a minute. Did you know I could cause you profound agony for the remainder of eternity? And he said, I'm very aware of that also. And he said, and you're still not afraid? And he said, nope, not at all. Satan's getting pretty perturbed. He said, well, tell me why you're not afraid. The man said, been married to your sister for 48 years. <laughs> Yep. I'm just glad that our security, our security guys are back in the back and they're watching. Uh, I want to talk about something this morning for just a few minutes. It's one of my favorite subjects in the Bible, and it's faith. Faith is the key to everything that we as Christians do. Faith is defined in the uh, dictionary as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Faith is defined in the Bible. We can find that in Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. You know, faith is a difficult thing to explain. We, we can see it in action but we can't see it. We, can, we can't touch it. But we know what it is when we have it. 
In essence, it's the heart's work. The heart's work toward the promises of God and toward the God of those promises. Faith can be understood when you watch faith in action. Faith can be looked at as sort of a puzzle, and that's kind of what we're going to look at this morning. We're going to look at faith in the life of a believer and see if we can put it all together. The first thing I want to look at is faith hears the voice of God through the clutter and the clatter of this world. You know, we're bombarded from all directions by different, uh, not only theology, but the world itself. They bombard us. And it's difficult if you don't pay attention and you don't have that faith. By faith, we can sort through all this stuff that's going on in the world and we can literally distinguish them from the, the voice of God that we can hear. There's a lot of stuff that muddle the water. Worldly things that, that, that muddy it up. We're going to look at a few this morning. The first one is the worldly voice of confirmation. It cries out to us. The world cries out to us that you don't want to be different than the other people in the world. It cries out to us. You don't want people to think you're some kind of weirdo because you believe the way you believe. They want you to live as they live. We have to dress like them, act like them, look like them, do the things they do. But by faith, Faith says that I'd better, rather be right with God than to be right with man. And if you can walk into a room and you're the only Christian in there, you should be able to stand firm and stand boldly for him. The second thing that the world wants you to listen to is the voice of reason. And they'll always say this, how... Can a good God allow something like the suffering that goes on in this world? They'll say, believing in God, your God hasn't fixed this. What's the deal? Happens all the time. Paul wrote in Galatians 1.4, speaking of Jesus, he said, Who gave, that's Jesus, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and our Father. Here's the deal. I don't know if you've ever thought about this. Jesus did not come to this earth to fix this earth. This earth was messed up from the first two people. It's always been a mess and it's got more evil and more evil and more evil as time goes on. He's not here. What he came for was to deliver us from this evil. Deliver us from this world. Faith says, I had rather choose what Jesus has to offer than what the world has to offer to me. The third thing, the worldly voice of tolerance. And I'm going to try not to get too fired up with this. But I am really sick of listening to people tell me that I've got to tolerate sin. That we've got to tolerate what is going on in our country today. You hear this, I've heard this. I know you have too. I've heard people say that everyone has their own God. I've even heard people say that they were, that they believed that everybody was their own God. I don't know. They'll tell you that it's arrogant for us to say that the, that our God, the God, is more important than anyone else's God. But by faith, speaking of the Lord Jesus in Acts 4 and 12, 4, 12, salvation is found in no one else. Underline that in your Bible if you would. For there is no other name, you can do that one also, just highlight this whole verse, 
under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Mohammed can't save you. Buddha can't save you. And we can just go on down the line. You can, you know, some people worship trees. Some people worship rocks. None of that's going to save you. Jesus Christ, the only thing that's going to save you. Nothing else. And then there's the worldly voice of indifference. It tells us to forget God. It tells us to enjoy your life while you're young. It tells us there's plenty of time to worry about what's going on in eternity. Absolutely. Have you ever heard anybody saying that, though? You'll ask them, well, why, why haven't you? Well, I will when I get older. Well, folks, we have seen in this world that sometimes you don't get older. We don't know what this is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen in the next minute. But by faith, we hear Jesus say in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me all, my favorite word in the Bible because it includes me, Come to me all, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Believers choose to ignore this voice of indifference and only obey the voice of God. These voices in this world are loud. They're coming at us from all directions. They're clanging everywhere. But our faith will filter out those voices that's demanding us to do certain things and listen to God's voice instead. Faith reaches far beyond this world. It reaches the only God, God the creator, God the father, and the sustainer of this world. And that happens all the way to eternity. Faith allows us to know, allows us to know where our eternity lies when we leave this world. You know, we discuss this often at the, the coffee shops and everywhere else. We worry about the leaders of this world right now. You know what we do forget? We forget sometimes that God is the one that's in charge. He is the leader. It happened that Moses was one of the first to defy leaders. Hebrews eleven twenty seven 27 tells us, By faith he, that would be Moses, left Egypt. Not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool verse. Faith considers God to be more valuable than any leader anywhere. That's just the way it is. God is that's why the Bible says that so many times. God is. God is everything. Faith gives us sort of a spiritual eye, if you would, and allows us to see him who is invisible. Now, I'll tell you right up front that I have never physically, visibly seen God. Do I know he's there? Absolutely, I know he's there. By faith, our hearts can see him. Our hearts can hear him and hear his word. Faith enables him to produce endurance in us that we must have to survive in this world. Endurance to meet the world's challenges, to meet any evil or punishment or persecution that we might, we might have. Hebrews 11 is a great chapter, and it describes the kind of endurance faith can generate. So if you, would you turn with me to 11, Hebrews 11, 36. It says, some, and this is speaking of believers, some faced jeers and flogging, while the others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death by the sword, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in the deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. 
These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Because God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. By faith. By faith. These verses describe people who were willing to reach beyond the world. They were willing to reach out into eternity and understand that eternal life is what really matters in this world. They faced endurance. That they, they faced things that were so, so horrendous for following the Lord. Mike mentioned it earlier. It happens around the world. We are blessed that it hasn't happened in this country. However, these people had realized that God, that eternity with God is far better than anything that this world can do. Think of, think of faith as a, a little hand on your heart. And it reaches out and it grabs hold of what God is offering each and every one of us. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone, another one of them good words in the Bible, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Faith accepts that offer. Faith accepts the everyone as themselves, as an individual, which it actually is. God has offered redemption to everyone. Every person that's ever been born through Jesus. However, it's something that has to be personally received by individual faith. This faith causes us to reach out and accept a free gift. And nobody leaves a free gift just sitting around. This is the greatest free gift that's ever been offered. God has made this available to all. But keep this in mind, he will not, God will not force you to accept it. And as the insurance people like to say, you got blanket coverage. Well, they kind of fibbing about that too. But also if you have someone that's telling you that they're going to get in. That mama's a Christian. Daddy's a Christian. My husband's a Christian. My wife's a Christian. And I'm going to get in on their proverbial coattails for salvation. Or fooling themselves. It's all up to you. It's been, a made, a made, it's been made available. By the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But it's only available when you receive it by faith. That's how you receive it. It can't be earned. It can't be bought. You can't qualify for it. We find that truth in a couple of verses that are some of my favorite in the Bible. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through what? Faith. And this not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Forgiveness, salvation, born again, any way you want to look at it, are all by the grace of God. Each and every bit of it. It's a gift. And it's yours. Yours for the taking by faith. Faith allows us to pry loose those things that seem to mean more to us than God in our lives. You see, God wants to be our everything. He doesn't want to be the caboose. He wants to be the engine of the train. He wants to be first, and he's only going to settle for being number one. Faith allows those things to happen without us being bitter. You know, at first we may, we may resist a little bit. We first become a Christian. But over time we're going to understand that the most valuable thing in our life is God. Nothing more, 
nothing less. And as our faith begins to grow and mature, we submit to God's plan to remove things in our lives that are causing us to stay away from him and to be able to do his will as we, as, as we go along in this world. I like, as a human, and I think I can speak for a whole lot of you, being in control of a situation. As long as we are in, think we're in control of our lives, we will never operate at 100% capacity for the Lord. It can't be done. We have to allow God to take over our earthly circumstances and trust him in everything. Have faith that he's going to take care of it. Sometimes we even have to let go of things that we feel that God has led us to do. Sometimes God will even remove us from a ministry that we are doing. In order to remind us of this, he is to be the focus of our life, not the service that we do for him. In other words, and I wish I'd have wrote this. I, I borrowed this for somebody. Sometime we become so engrossed in the ministry that we neglect the God of the ministry. When we come to church on Sunday mornings, it's so great to see friends and family and church members and, and community members that have come to, to be with us. But it's not about me. It's not about these singers. This is all about God, folks. This is about salvation. This is about Jesus Christ that died for us. The Apostle Paul understood all this. In Philippians 3, 7, he says, But whatever was to my profit, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I lost all things. And I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Often God will crush the superficial little things in our lives. He does that to build us into men and women of God. The process throughout the Bible is called chastisement. Chastisement is defined as discipline or reprimand. It's a whole lot about what's going to happen to me when I get home today. <laughs> but chastisement doesn't only do, it's not only dealing with our wrongdoing. But chastisement is also a lot of times removing a weight that is around your neck that's keeping you down. Friends, we've got to understand that God intends us to be a certain thing. We can drag these heavy chains around with us, and we can't do his job. We can't do the job he wants us to do. But leave, when you leave here today, leave your burdens in here. God will take care of them. You leave your burdens. You walk out that door fresh, new, feeling strong. Where you can go on about your lives. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with the perseverance the rakes marked out for us. Faith allows us to just turn loose of what we think we can control and we can place God as one, number one in our lives. Justice, or the laws we might say, demands, you know, the, the laws of Moses, the laws they tried to follow that nobody could follow except Jesus, it tells us we must work. We must meet the demands of this law or we'll pay the price at the end of this life. However, 
faith tells us that I haven't met the demands. It, faith tells us I cannot meet the demands. Faith tells us the price has been paid in full. Those that rest in that faith have found a promise. They found the promised rest that Jesus promises. And that rest is impossible without having faith. Hebrews 4.1 tells us, says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to, be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did, but the message heard was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Faith provides sort of an exemption to us. It keeps us from the death penalty of not being able to take care of things through the law. Most people will struggle. Many of them will, and I've talked to so many. And I was brought up in a church that works was a big thing. Great people, great people. Heaven going to be full of them, no doubt. But it was a hindrance in some way. It was a hindrance because you always wondered if you were going to be a good enough person. If you were going to be doing good enough for others. You know, those are beautiful, beautiful things to do, and it's something as Christians that we should do. But those things will not buy you righteousness. Without Jesus and trust in Him, you are wasting your time trying to get in. That way it will not work. It's not the work that we have to do. But when we are saved, we want to do work for the Lord. It pleases us to do things for others. Faith rests on that righteousness that's been purchased for us and given to those that trust Jesus and accept Him. Once saved, that labor that we do is fantastic. One fellow in this church, I, he was the first person I ever heard say the words, but he said the words that when you're working for the Lord, it's a labor of love for God. I wanted to read you a quote. It says, Oh, the peace that is wrought in the heart of one whose faith rests securely in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on his behalf, on our behalf. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Faith, folks, is our witness to the kingdom of heaven. That's how we find heaven. Without faith, we can't possibly, we can't possibly know what awaits God's children. When we look for confirmation or signs of God's kingdom on this earth, we're going to be so disappointed because we can't find it here. We can see the beauty of what he's done, but we cannot find it here. We're going to be disappointed up until that point that we realize Luke 17, 20 tells us Jesus was really having a good time with these Pharisees. As once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observations. Observation of the law is what you're speaking of. Nor will the people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is where it's within you. When you believe that's it. You, you feel it. Faith is the total belief in confirmation of the unseen reality. So we've looked at this morning. Faith hears. 
Faith sees, faith grasps, faith allows, faith rests, faith witnesses. If you will allow, faith will lift you out of self-pity. It'll, it'll lift you out of hopelessness, lift you out of struggle and confusion and a feeling of a lack of purpose. If you haven't placed your faith in Jesus today, this very moment, you're probably facing one or all of those. So build in a peace, a confidence, a joy, a rejoicing, expectation, rest, and it'll give you a purpose of life also. One last verse and I'll close. Romans 10, 17 says, So then by faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This morning we've looked at what God's word says about faith. Now's the time that we exercise that faith completely. We have to do it in our lives and hopefully we can spread it to the lives of others. Friends, faith is it. Faith is the key. Faith in Jesus is the key for us getting out of this world al alive. It's the key to know where we are going at the end of time. Everyone in this room faces the same thing, death. Death of this old body. We face it. There's nothing we can do about it. And we've got the choice. We can choose Jesus. We can choose him for salvation. Or we can reject it. It's up to you. If you would, if you stand. As you know, we're going to have a baptism this morning. And uh, Brandon's going to come up this morning and if y'all need to come up and pray with him, come on up and pray. If you want to come to the altar, come on up. Symbolically, I always say you can come to the altar. And when you come to the altar, you can just leave your, leave your stuff here. Leave your problems right up here and walk out of here feeling good today. So, oh Boyd, if you want to come on back, we'll, me and you'll go back here. Uh, I've told him earlier today that, that he's a pretty good-sized boy like I am. A little smaller than me, but if we go out of sight, y'all send help. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after, uh, after we have an invitation, uh, if y'all would, if you just have your seats again, and we'll be with you, with you shortly as Brandon will be up here, and uh, Mike will be playing for us. So.
this is a this is Boyd Palmer. We've been we've been acquaintances and friends for quite some time, and uh, I'm so privileged and feel so good about uh, that he's asked me to to baptize him. We uh, a few weeks back, and uh, you know we talk about it all the time, and I'm going to tell a story that I don't think the young man would mind me telling, but. Uh, Young fella came up front last, uh, it's been a few weeks back, and, and uh, told me, he said he wanted, to be, he wanted to be baptized, that he was saved. And you know, I always say that there's somebody out there that you can influence. And Boyd come up the next Sunday and wanted to be baptized, and he told me when this young man, well, I'll just say, when Tucker, when Tucker came, when Tucker... Uh, Hunter, I'm getting it. Last time, I don't know what I called you, but it's Hunter. I knew it had something to do. I should be able to remember that. Hunter, I'll get it. Everybody here knows that I'm awful with names. But anyway, uh, Boyd told me, he said, you know, when that young man come up, it inspired me that I needed to be saved and baptized. So that's, uh, you can always make a difference. It's, that's true. It can, uh, it'll always something in this life that you can help one person along the way. All right, we're going to we're going to give it a whirl here. Where am I going? You're going to try to stand there. I ain't sure we can do this. I'm not either. Stand right there. I'm okay. going to just brace myself. <laughs> Carla said if I would uh, dunk you every every time that I could. So if you grab a hold of this arm, grab your nose. Okay. Boy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ah, awesome. Uh, all right, if you would, if you'd stand. Thank y'all all for being here this morning. And uh, love y'all. Y'all have a good week. Be good to each other. And may God bless. Roy, would you dismiss us, please?